Come on, let's just take this a bit higher tonight. Come on, let's ascend the hill of the Lord tonight. We exalt to Jesus. Come on. We bless your name. right now, I just want you to lift up your hands. Just lift up your hands. Just begin to worship Jesus. Just begin to worship Jesus. Come on. I want you just to begin to think about all the things that he's done for you. How he saved you. How he set you free. How he delivered you. How he healed you. Come on, I don't know about you, but I've come into the house to praise the Lord. He is worthy of all praise. I don't know, I just think Jesus is looking for some undignified folk who will just get a little undignified tonight. That was the strategy that David used as he moved before the ark of presence. He got a little undignified.
into this but Pastor Joel he said he felt it I was feeling the same thing there's something that God is going to do in the midst of the shout sometimes God asks us to do things that don't make sense like he told Israel he says I want you to go around the walls of Jericho seven times and on the seventh time I want you to release a shout you see we just do things that just seem out of the unordinary you see, when we release the shout, God tears down the walls. And I feel that there's enough authority in the room tonight. As we release the shout, walls are going to come down. Walls that have been resisting Oklahoma for stepping into the fullness of revival. There is enough authority in the room tonight to tear down walls of apathy, to tear down walls of complacency, to tear down the prophets of Baal, to tear down every Jezebel spirit in the realm of the Holy Spirit. So on the count of three, we're going to lift up a shout and walls are going to come down tonight. Are you ready?
place tonight as we begin to shout in praise. God is actually shattering a spirit of religion over this state. A spirit of religion that has actually been working with the enemy to hold people in bondage and out of the kingdom. But those walls are coming down tonight. And the second thing that I saw the Holy Spirit do is we begin to shout and pray Here for a cue. 
of God. And the Lord has seen you. He has said, my eyes are going to and fro across this nation. Who will give me a place to dwell? Who will give me a place to land? And this is a church where the glory of the Lord is welcome. It's welcome. So glory of God.
Come on, you pray as prayers of perfection. When we pray in an unknown tongue, we pray prayers of perfection. She Canada, it's the groans of the spirit that shake cities. It's the groans of the spirit that releases revival. It's the groan of the spirit that opens up the well.
when naysayers, it's not an if, but a when. Do you understand? When you say, I'm all in for revival, I'm all in for the glory, it's not if, but when naysayers try to accuse you of being emotional, try to accuse you of showboating, you understand, I, I want to equip this house because you're called to carry revival. You go back, you go back to the word and every cancer patient that's healed, every addiction that's broken, every marriage on the brink of divorce that is restored, every loved one and prodigal that comes home, you say, God, it's worth the ridicule. It's worth the misunderstanding. It's worth the gossip. I choose to pay the price to say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord and we will groan together and we will worship together and we will cry out for the glory together because the world is desperate for the glory and they don't even have language for what they're desperate for. But God's giving you a secret. And he says, they really want the glory. They really want the glory. So I hear God even saying and charging you now, carry my glory. Set 
the captives free. Set them free. Miracles, miracles in school. Cancers, cancers healed in your school. Carry the glory. Carry the glory. Whoa, carry the glory to the athletic field. Whoa, carry the glory. Come on, stretch carry out your the hands glory. to these young ones. Carry it for your generation. Whoa, whoa. Oh, open up his voice, God. Hey, carry the glory for your generation. Signs, wonders, and miracles, says the Lord. Get ready. The drug addicts are going to be set free with the word, with the word, with the word that comes out of your mouth. Carry the glory. Yeah, you're going to break depression and suicide off of people. Carry the glory of the Lord. Carry the glory, carry the glory. Some of you, your kids aren't here and you wish they were. Don't worry, the glory's gonna go to them. Begin to cry out, cry out, cry out. God is raising up a glory generation and this is only the beginning. Thank you, God. Come on, let's just intercede for this generation. We're gonna lay hands on everybody. We're gonna operate in miracles but listen let's just pray for them right now father we break off a spirit of heaviness we break off any confusion we break off any opposition that would try to stand against them we declare that the fire of revival would burn bright within them that they would be glory carriers in their schools that when they step into the classroom, the manifest presence of God settles in the room. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. We prophesy to the schools that they'll break out in revival. That they'll have to shut down the school because there was an outpouring of the Spirit of God. I see bodies, children, teenagers being slain under the power of God on campuses in Oklahoma. Listen, here's the deal. We are in a move of God in America. I know it seems like, what, inflation, gas prices, six seven eight dollars in some places and we're in revival absolutely but you have to understand something about revival there are measures of revival we are in revival but here's the thing the wave of glory and revival is beginning to swell and I mean it's like tsunami like forces are about to hit Miriam's had several dreams. I just had a dream literally a week ago where the Lord began to show me I was in I was in this big huge room and we were right on the ocean. And I was on this porch and I was through I was looking through this door and it was a glass door. I can see the ocean. And all of a sudden the wave begin to swell and it was so big it was so ginormous I said I better go inside this is a big one I stepped inside and all of a sudden the waves begin to crash on the room and then all of a sudden the king size bed in the room was the focal point of the dream and I realized that God was saying this is the king size bed of the king of kings and in order for us to steward the move of God that's coming, it's going to require intimacy with the King of Kings. Are you with me? And so I would like to propose to you that we are in a move of God, and I would like to suggest if He's not moving in your neighborhood, if He's not moving in your school or your workplace, if He's not moving where you live, it's because He hasn't found anybody to move through. Are you with me? He's looking for people in this hour that he can use to show himself strong through. You have to understand something about revival. Revival comes in a man. It comes in a woman. 
It comes in people who would yield themselves in such a way and say, God, I may not have the background, I may not have the degree, I may not really know much about the Bible, but I'm hungry. I would like to tell you that your hunger is what qualifies you to be a carrier of revival. Any time in history you look throughout Judges, any time there was a declension in Israel, the Bible says that there would be a declension and there was a generation that arose that did not know the works of the Lord. But then God raised up a revivalist. He raised up a Deborah. He raised up, come on, a Gideon. Come on, Gideon. He, he, he didn't even believe in himself. Are you with me? When the angel showed up, he said, mighty man of valor, the Lord is with you. You see, he had to speak to Gideon's identity. Because I would like to propose to you that the liberation of cities and nations is locked up in the mind of people. And God has to speak to your identity. Miriam was saying it, wear his glory. You are being mantled for revival. If you are here in this place and you're under the sound of my voice, I would like to suggest that you have been divinely set up to carry the last day's mantle for revival. So if you're looking for revival and you're burning for revival tonight, your night. Tonight's your night. But here's the thing. When, you, when God puts a new mantle on someone, He'll take an old mantle off. Things that attach themselves to the world that don't belong with you are going to break tonight in Jesus' name. Are you with me? I'm talking about that fear, that anxiety, well, I, or that inadequacy. Well, I don't feel like I can preach the gospel. I don't feel like I can share the gospel. I don't believe that I can prophesy or move in signs and wonders and miracles. I would like to propose to you that the anointing destroys the yoke and that yoke of belief that's been oppressing your mind and stopping you from moving forward into personal revival is going to be dismantled tonight in Jesus' name. Tonight's your night. But I'm going to quote my wife. She said this. If she was here, I would totally take it and, not, and just use it for myself. But she's here, so I'm going to bring honor. You see, when we cry out for revival, I, she said this probably a week ago. We were somewhere out of, on the East Coast. She says, when you cry out for revival, what you're asking for is God to inconvenience you. That hit me, and I know I understand that. When you cry out for revival, when you make a choice to carry a mantle, you are crying out to be inconvenienced. Come on, your whole life is going to change. You may be called in the middle of the night at 3 a.m. to begin to intercede for your city. Come on, you may have to go down aisle 7 in Target and preach the gospel to that lost soul. Come on, I'm tired as business as usual. I'm tired as church as usual. I love it. We've got to have corporate gatherings. But this is not the end of our Christianity. The whole thing with COVID and all that nonsense that the enemy tried to throw at us, that was demonic. But how many of you know what the enemy meant for bad? God turns it around for good. You see, that was prophesying to us that the church has left the building. Are you with me? Come on, we're going to gather together. We, have, we do this. This is what we love to do. But God is anointing people to be carriers of the glory. When you go out into regions and cities, you carry a spirit on you called revival. And people come under your shadow and they're healed. They're set free. They're delivered. But they also are convicted of their sin. Come on, we've got to quit warring the wrong way. we got to quit warring with wise and persuasive words I'm right you're wrong no we've got a war with power and that what God is mantling you with tonight is the demonstration of the Spirit's power come on somebody but here's the thing with me, when you receive a mantle for revival and I can't remember if I said this so please if we talked about that I know we laid hands on you but come on how many of you know that it's glory to glory how many of you know that yesterday's encounter was awesome, but there's more for you today? 
Come on, every time there's an opportunity to get to the altar, I get to the altar. I'm like, God, touch me, use me, whatever. I don't care. I want more. You see, you have to understand something. When you receive a mantle, when you see, receive a fresh metron, that, that word metron means measure. That means measure to increase, measure to step into new territories, measures to move in greater realms of the supernatural and glory. When you receive a mantle like that, that mantle, unfortunately, if not used and activated, will lie dormant in your life. We can pray for you until our hair falls out and we fall on the floor. If you do not activate that grace that's in your life, it will never, never bring it forth to fruition. You'll just see it in your heart and it will never be manifested. So if we lay hands on you tonight, believe in faith that you're receiving a new mantle, a new grace, a new authority, but then go out and do some stuff that you've never done before. In order for us to go places in God that we've never been before, we got to do some things that we've never done before. We've got to be risk takers. Come on, somebody. Well, brother, I received a prophetic word that I would heal the sick. But if you're not laying hands on the sick, come on, somebody. Come on, you've got to go work the miracles. You've got to open up. If you never prophesied before, you've got to open up your mouth according to Psalms and he'll fill it. You've got to use the measure that he's given you. Are you with me? Okay. I think you've got it, right? Amen? I want everybody to lift their hands. Merriman and I, Merriman's going to pray. I'm going to pray. And I want you to pay attention because God's going to come on many of you. And I've, I think I talked to you about this last time, but when God comes on people, sometimes He comes on this, it's this, this weighty presence. Sometimes he comes like, there's like a tingling in your hands. These are the ways of God. Like electricity will fall on your hand. You start to feel like electricity, like this tingling sensation. Almost, sometimes it can feel like a, 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 like a scarf just being placed on your hands. Sometimes it's tears of love just start rolling down your face. Sometimes you get blasted with Holy Ghost joy. And you laugh uncontrollably. And I don't know why, but God knows. Sometimes you're going to shake under the power of God. Whatever it might look like, however it may come, just receive. We're going to have people that's going to help us minister behind you. We're going to lay hands on you. You need biblical precedents for this. It's in the Bible. Do you guys all believe it's in the Bible? I don't have to, I don't have to go there tonight. Praise God. That's going to save us a whole lot of time. So let's just pray. Can we just sing something, Miriam? Let's just pray. Mary, you want to say something before we go? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what, we'll, serve, we'll help serve you guys if somebody's watching online. Hebrews chapter 6 says that laying on of hands is a foundational teaching. So if anybody's asking online, so we're going to do that. But I do, before we, before we go into praying for impartation, I just, um, as Tommy was talking, I just really felt just a, a healing oil rest in the room. And um, I would like to call for those that need healing in their body. Um, everywhere we go, um, I, I want to just quickly, like 30, not even 30 seconds, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, you understand? So this is not the testimony of Tommy and Miriam, this is the testimony of Jesus. And almost everywhere we go, deaf ears are opened, um, we get uh, reports of arthritis being healed, cancer being healed, tumors dissolving, different things. People will contact us on social media and whatnot. We get these testimonies back. We've seen it in real time. And so I share that with you because um, I'm fully expectant and I can feel the faith of God actually in the room. And I just believe 100% that God's going to heal bodies tonight. And so I want to declare that over this house. I want to make room for that. And then we're going to pray for impartation. And, and let me tell you why this is so important. Because God healed my physical body of many things. And that's actually what brought me into the kingdom. I didn't even think God liked me at the time. But he began to heal my body when people prayed for me. And I was like, nice try and then I was shocked when it actually worked and so I say that to say that freely I've received and so freely I want to give and for those of you that I believe in advance are going to be touched in your body and healed freely you receive freely give so that's that's another piece of the impartation tonight is that you're gonna receive so that you can give to advance the kingdom 
for the sake of Jesus. Because you know what? Jesus is revival. And I'll prove it because in John 11, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. And you know what? He actually said something really provoking that I love. Whenever Lazarus died and Martha was like a wreck and an unbelief, and Jesus said, he'll rise up again. And she goes, yeah, I know when everybody raises up, when you come back, you know, like in glory, right? Not like the presence of glory, but like the bygone glory, you know, like after you die and you go to heaven. And he said, no, he said right now is what he told her. I'm gonna read this very quickly. And I'm gonna say this. And do you realize as I'm reading the word, you have permission to be healed in your body? Because he sent forth his word and healed our diseases. As Martha is in unbelief, and I speak, you know, this over, over being mantled for revival and over being healed in your body, that Martha said, Jesus, you don't, you know, you don't have to wait till then. You know, like, I get it. My brother's going to raise up. I get it with the resurrection of everybody one day. And excuse me, Jesus said to Martha, this was his reply. He said, you don't have to wait until then. I am the resurrection and I am the life. And I feel that that is a word right now concerning revival and concerning the healing of our bodies. We don't have to wait until we die and go to heaven or until the second coming. There is that coming. You don't hear me saying that that's not coming. That is coming but there is an element of heaven now on earth. And you don't have to wait until you die and go to heaven to be healed and have a brand new body. You don't have to wait until then, Jesus said, because I am the resurrection and I am the life. We don't have to wait to be revived until we go to heaven. He says, you don't have to wait until then. So if we want revival, it's at the feet of Jesus because he specializes in raising dead things back to life. He's really good at it. So I just feel right now, I'm just, I have a few word of knowledge, right? And I'm not gonna take very long saying that. First Corinthians chapter 12, I'm just gonna say a few, a few things. And whether I do or do not call it out, like will you just make your way up at the front if you need healing in your body, but I, 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 there's a few things I wanna go after is cancer and any type of terminal disease in your body, arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, and I felt that the Spirit of God was healing bones, that bones uh, due to um, accidents, injuries, and even the osteoarthritis, we're gonna go after that and believe God for that. And we're going to pray, we're going to still pray for impartation. So I don't want, I don't want everybody to uh, forget that because we want you to carry everything that you're seeing tonight. And we're going to do this really quickly. We have our team of ministry here with us tonight. And they're going to give some words of knowledge that the Holy Spirit is speaking to them. Whether or not we call it out, Jesus is the name above every name. And so whether or not we call it out, you still have permission to be healed. And so we want you to receive that, but we are going to operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, amen? And so I also feel like spines, but I'm, I'm gonna let them go, because I'm sure they're feeling it already. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yes, the Lord told me that people in wheelchairs and in canes would be healed tonight. Yeah, I was getting arthritis. Arthrit arthritic conditions. The Lord is going to heal knees tonight. Knees. Anybody with bad knees or knee replacement, you can get up here. Unhealed broken bones. Unbroken, uh, unhealed bones. I, I felt that too. God's going to heal uh, bone conditions of every kind, whether it be in your back, your spine, um, old related injuries specifically. Uh, I think there might have been someone around nine years ago you had an accident and it broke a bone and it's caused you some pain. God's going to heal that tonight. Kidneys. God wants to heal kidneys. Every issue with kidneys. Go ahead, baby. Yeah. Um, 
So, so did anybody, I just want you to quick raise your hand if they called out any of your, any of your conditions. Okay, I want you guys to go find the people. <laughs> and we're going to still pray even if they, but I, I just feel it's real important that they make contact with you. <clears throat> so I'm just going to pray and, and then we're going we're gonna to call people up. We're still going to do impartation, but I feel very strongly that there's just such a deposit. And, and let me tell you another reason why we're doing this, because this is going to continue in this house after we leave. I really believe that as we are um, doing this, I really believe that the wells of healing in this area are going to be dug up. And I just all day as we were, you know, here in town, I kept hearing, spring up, oh well, spring up, oh well. And, and I just kept praying, may the wells of healing spring up in Tulsa. May the wells of healing. So God, we just thank you right now over every physical body. Lord, we thank you hormones are being regulated. God, right now, I just speak over every barren womb right now, and I say be fruitful and multiply in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I just thank you for your healing presence, God. We just thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord, that bodies are going to be renewed tonight. And, and please, any, heal, any uh, ministry teams of the house, just, just come and join me as we just pray for the sick and just declare them healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah, neuropathy is being healed. Someone with neuropathy is being healed. There's also someone, uh, your left shoulder specifically, God is healing a left shoulder tonight. There's also, um, you've got some kind of condition in your cervical spine. God is healing that tonight. There's also someone you dealing with um, asthma, uh, or COPD, lung conditions. We've seen this healed. God is healing that tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Also, God is dealing with someone's sugar. You've got like, I don't know if it's sugar diabetes, but God is uh, regulating your sugar levels right now in Jesus' mighty name. God's also healing someone's bowels. You're being healed of like inflammation of the bowels. Father, right now we take authority over every spirit of infirmity. We take authority over every spirit of sickness and disease and affliction, and we command it to go. We say be healed in Jesus' mighty name. We declare the miracle working power of Jesus in bodies tonight. We break off affliction. We break off infirmity. We break off sickness. We break off trauma due to accidents. And we shut that door. And we say, be free. Be healed. There's a woman here. You've got some kind of blood condition. God is healing your blood. Be healed in Jesus' mighty name. Receive it right now in Jesus' mighty name. There's also someone here or maybe watching online. You've got like a, a something, there's an issue with your cells. I don't even know. I just I just heard cells. God is uh, rewriting your DNA in your cell on a cellular level. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, right now out of this house as we pray for the sick and as others pray for the sick, we declare that the healing wells that Oral Roberts dug. Father, we decree and prophesy, be open. The same healing wells that Catherine Coleman dug in Oklahoma, we say, be open in Jesus' name. May it begin tonight. May it begin tonight. We invite you, Holy Spirit. We invite your presence, Holy Spirit. We invite your angels to come and assist us in miracles tonight. Come on, if you need a miracle, get up here. Hurry, don't hesitate. Doesn't matter how many times you've been prayed for. You come until it manifests. We're going to pray and believe God tonight. Come on, if I can get some of the leadership team as well, just to activate them. We're going to lay hands on people.
on. God's healing somebody's eyes tonight. Eyes be healed. Deaf ears open in Jesus' name. over your body. We declare Christ the healer over your body in the name of Jesus. He is the same today, yesterday, and forever. Be healed. God's healing someone's feet right now. body dissolve now in Jesus' name. We command metal in the body to dissolve in Jesus' name. We command shoulders to be completely healed in the presence of the Lord. Be healed in Jesus' name. disorders. Lord, we just say by the blood of Jesus, Lord, that you are rewriting DNAs in this house right now in Jesus' mighty name. God, I just thank you for the faith, Lord, the gift of faith to come upon your people tonight to have greater faith in the finished work of the cross than what our genealogy may say or what our inherited diseases may say. May we have a greater faith that rests in the finished work of Jesus. God, I thank you right now. We just come in anywhere where there's degeneration. We declare a regeneration by the Spirit of God in Jesus' mighty name. The law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus is greater than the law of sin and death. We declare that over bodies right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Christ the healer. Christ the healer. We worship Christ the healer. Stay any longer. Your 
just begin to announce over your body, I receive my healing tonight. I announce tonight, my healing begins tonight. In the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus died for my sins. For the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross, he died for my healing. I declare, therefore, I am healed in Jesus' mighty name. Now begin to check your body out. Do something, even if you're back, if you're online. We've seen many people healed online. Try to do something that you could not do. If it's 10% better, you give God praise. If it's 20% better, you give God praise. If it's 30% better, you give God praise. You see, when we pray, we believe God is at work. And so we want to praise Him and focus on what He is doing, not what He's not doing. Sometimes we, it's like, well, I'm not 100% healed. I don't have, I can't give God praise. But we've seen people give God praise for the 10%. The 20%, and as they gave God praise, God did the full work. So if you're getting any better, just start to give Him some praise. God, I thank you for the 5, the 10, the 20, the 30%. Oh, I thank you that the Word has been released. I thank you that I'm being healed tonight. I receive it in Jesus' name. Try to do something that you could not do. Test your body out. Move your body around. Move your knees. I feel like somebody needs to run. I, I, I feel that. You gotta do something that you could not do. Maybe bend down, bend over. Take off your glasses. Take out your hearing aids. Remove whatever it is that you're relying on. If you can test it out, test it out right now. Come on, if God's touching you, just wave at me. You feel the presence on you right now. God's healing your body, just wave. Wave. And how many of you are actually beginning to feel a little bit? You're feeling some breakthrough in your body. Just wave at me. Come on, all over the building, here and here, back here, over here, up there, all over the building. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we pray again. Come on, Jesus prayed for a blind man twice. Come on, we're working the works. We're working the miracles. Father, we declare in Jesus' mighty name, we thank you for the little. We thank you, God, for the bread that you're pouring out tonight. God, we take authority over every spirit of infirmity and affliction, over every disease. We break it now in Jesus' mighty name. And we say, be healed, be made new, be restored. Ears hear, backs behold, knees, articular cartilage in the knees, be created. I command bones to come into order. I just, I just keep feeling there's just like some of you are experiencing heat in your body. I feel like the fire of God, who is that? The fire of God is beginning to touch your body. Just pay attention to that. Some of you that are here for healing, sometimes that is a, um, that's a sign you don't always have to have the heat, but I felt to call that out to almost reaffirm it, to not doubt what you're feeling. So Holy Spirit, I just thank you. I thank you, Lord. Forget not his benefits, Psalms 103. Forget not his benefits. Healing is one of the benefits of the cross. We thank you for the cross, Jesus. We give glory and honor to you, Jesus. You are Christ the healer. You are Christ the healer. And I just feel not only is God continuing to work and move in bodies, I feel it so strongly. 
that he's still doing a work. The great physician is here. The great physician is here. But I also believe that the gift of healing, the gift of miracles is dropping as well. So if that's something that you want to partner with to advance the kingdom of God, just, just receive it right where you are. I thank you, Lord, that the gift of healing and miracles is dropping not only to heal bodies in the room, but so that you can lay hands on the sick and see them recover. In the workplace, in your school, in your home, in your neighborhood, Lord, we just receive the gift of the miraculous that proves to the world that Jesus is alive, that what you did on the cross is real, and that it works. God, I just thank you right now that you are releasing a deposit in this house for the working of miracles. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Wow, thank you, God. I tell people this all the time, even when we begin to shift and do something else, you have permission to be healed. We've had people report, as a matter of fact, are you guys streaming? Are you guys streaming? I just, you know what, I feel that so strong right now. Those of you watching online, if you need healing in your body or you have a loved one that does, will you share this? Every time we direct prayer to those watching online, we always get word back of people getting healed. So the same spirit of God that's here, it transcends space and time. And so we believe, those of you watching, we just command, let's just do this as a house together. Come on, you've already received, freely give. We just say right now, raise up out of your sick bed in the name of Jesus, cancer. We command you to get out of the body, infirmity of any kind, sickness, long COVID, or even the fear of COVID. We command you right now to get out of people's bodies. We speak to brain tumors right now. We speak to cancerous tumors right now. And we command you to leave people's bodies in Jesus' mighty name. May Jesus be glorified through your healing in the mighty name of Jesus. We want you to let the house know, let Millennial Church know how Jesus touched your body and how he healed you. And as we move on, we just want you guys, listen, some people get healed instantaneously. Sometimes it's by the end of the week. We want you to let us know what is happening in your body and we want you to know how the Holy Spirit touched you in the name of Jesus. So we bless you guys. Yeah, so I, I, wanna, I wanna add to what Mary was just saying. If you didn't see any breakthrough in your body tonight, don't go away thinking, well, it just wasn't my night. I guess it's not time. Come on, faith is not a point in time. It's not a hit, win, miss, or lose. Faith never lets go in the kingdom of God. Are you with me? The Bible says that lepers came to Jesus. As they went, they were healed. So you go away tonight saying, I'm healed in Jesus' name. You don't look for your symptoms. You look for your healing. From this day forward, make an announcement every day when you get up. In Jesus' name, I'm healed. There was a man, I have to tell this story. There was a man that was completely 100% blind. Okay? He was 100% blind. And he went to a healing meeting. And he received it by faith. And in the meeting, he, he saw no breakthrough whatsoever. He's still blind as blind can be. But he went away in faith declaring, I was healed. He was healed. He kept saying, I'm healed in Jesus' name. I received my healing. I was blind, but now I can see. I was blind, but now I can see. He did that for two weeks. People called him crazy. He was at the barber shop getting his hair cut and his beard trimmed. And he was talking to the barber, and the barber was saying, you know, just talking to him. He's like, yeah, I went to this healing meeting, and, and I'm de I believe that I can see. Uh, my blindness is left. I'm healed in Jesus' name. Now, we're not talking about denial, but he had received it already. He had already apprehended it in faith, the word of the Lord. And as he was sitting there in the barber's chair, his eyes opened up two weeks later. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. 
Don't you deny the power of the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. The enemy wants you to buy into a lie and say, well, it must not be my time. Listen, if we believe the lie, we empower the liar. We take authority over every lie, over every diagnosis, over every prognosis, and we declare that we are healed in Jesus' name. I declare that I'm getting better. My body's getting stronger. Come on, we need to begin to change our language. Are you with me? We got to quit giving flu a season. Are you with me? We got to quit saying, well, my cough, my this, that, my that, my blood pressure, my pain, it's not yours. Quit making those announcements over yourself. I know what it's like to contend to for a miracle. We've got to change our language. That's why you can begin to decree a thing and it shall be established in your life. Are you with me? And we've got a book back there. I'm not, I'm not even going to promote the book, but yeah, I'm going to promote it. It's back there in the back if you want it. We've got over 200 decrees in a book that we've made just for you. And our lives begin to change by the power of decree. So if you want it, there's over 200 biblical-based decrees. Go through it for 40 days. I promise you, you'll see results. Miriam and I hadn't seen one miracle in our life, and God said, you've got to change the way that you're thinking and get on page with heaven. We begin to decree and begin to speak the word of the Lord. We begin to change the way that we were talking. And, and this is long before we saw one miracle in our own lives, through our lives, but before we saw any revival, any kind of thing, before we had a ministry, before we had anything, we begin to prophesy and decree a thing. And all of a sudden, about five to six years later, we begin to see transformation. So we believe in the power of decree. So if you want to pick that up, it's back there. And I just thought it was a perfect time. But everybody stand with us. We're going to go into impartation. Baby, is there anything else before we go? So I want you just to lift up your hands. We talked about a mantle earlier. A mantle for revival is falling on you. I'm going to, pro I'm going to declare something over you. It's a familiar scripture. I had this earlier. It's Isaiah 58 and 12. It says this, that those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. And you shall be called repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to dwell in. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. Generations that have gone before us, like Oral Roberts, like Catherine Kuhlman, like A.A. A. Allen, like the Azusa Street Revival, William Seymour. How many of you believe, heard of that revival? Like Charles Finney and, uh, you know, Evan Roberts, who was the steward of the Welsh Revival. God is looking in these last days for people who will go back in time and pull in out of time into today that which they broke through years ago. He's looking for people who will redig those wells again of revival. Come on, they saw miracles, signs and wonders, demonstrations of power in the 50s. They saw great moves of glory in the 90s. And God, I believe, has prophesied what he wants to do in these last days. But he said this to me, he says, listen, the wells that I dug in the 50s of healing, in the Voice of Healing movement, the wells that I dug in the 90s in Brownsville Revival, Toronto Revival, Argentine Revival, they were all amazing. But this well that's about to spring up, it's going to be greater than any well that we've ever seen. But here's the thing, he's looking for people who will be the repairer of the breach. He's looking for revival diggers who will grab a shovel and dig and dig and dig and dig until they see the water begin to spring up. God is releasing tonight a mantle of holy grit to dig and keep on digging until the glory settles in the, in the room. Are you ready? Let's just go into, I don't even know, let's just go into something. Spirit of love.
Come on, just begin to cry out to the Lord. And we're going to begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. And as the Spirit of God comes on you, we're going to invite you to the front and we're going to pray for you. Come on. We invite you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. We invite you, our precious Lord and friend. We invite you now to immerse them in a spirit of revival, to release a fresh mantle. Come, precious Holy Spirit.
Take it, take it, take it. Take it. Take it, take it.
Come on, just lift your hands. Just lift your hands. Come on, even right now where you're at, God, we just declare the more. We declare that the mantle of revival, we declare that it be activated in Jesus' mighty name, that you would activate it, that they would begin to burn and keep on burning, that God, when they open up their mouths, They'll cause others to burn with them. Oh, we declare a mighty burning anointing. A mighty burning anointing. The spirit of burning to rest upon them. Fire on you, sir. Bye. 
I just pray over those that are 65 years and older. I declare Psalms 92.10 that you shall be anointed with fresh oil. Even in your old age, you shall abide and bear fruit in the house of the Lord. I declare that your best days are yet ahead. I declare that the most fruitful days are yet ahead. I declare that this house shall be a house of fresh oil. These people shall be a house of fresh oil. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. guys and, and your spouses, if you guys can just come up here. Tommy probably already did this the last time he was here, but I'm feeling it so strongly. Before we move on, I, I'm not sure who this precious couple is, but I feel it's worth noting that the Spirit of God is giving them a mantle for revival for this generation. For this generation, He's unlocking their voices, and these two will be known as voices of revival for this generation. Whoa, God's giving you the young people, the Gen Zs, those that society has written off. Whoa, and when he gives you authority, signs, wonders, and miracles always follow the demonstration of the gospel. Preach the gospel. Preach the gospel to the generation. The Holy Spirit always confirms the gospel. Oh. We're going to keep going. The Spirit of God is moving. I said it to you guys in private, but I feel it's worth saying it in public. The Lord is anointing you to ride the waves of revival. He's going to give you the spirit of discernment to know where revival is about to hit. He's going to send you to those cities before it comes to prepare them for the coming revival. The Lord's going to anoint you to actually begin to discern the wave in the middle of services, the waves of the spirit of revival. And I see holy interruptions, holy interruptions, holy interruptions of the Holy Spirit. And it's going to come in like a tsunami wave, a tsunami wave. And you're going to roll with it. You're going to roll with it. God, whoa, I thank you, Lord. Evangelism, hey, evangelism, the go of the gospel, the go of the gospel for this generation. I see teams, teams of evangelists, teams on the streets. Teams of worshipers on the streets. Teams worship evangelism that shifts the city's atmospheres. God, burn like a mighty fire. Burn like a mighty fire in a thought. You have a word, a word for this generation. A word of conviction and holiness. A word that carries the plumb line of holiness for this next generation. Raise up the revivalists. Raise up the revivalists. Shake. Father, we just declare right now, that even over this mighty woman of God, that she would unlock that prophetic anointing that's deep with inside her. Father, that you would accelerate her in the prophetic. I declare that dreams and visions would increase. I declare, Lord, that she would begin to see there's just like the seer dimension resting upon you. Really, both of you. Both of you, Jeremy. Jeremy, you too. And I even hear the Lord saying, write down what I'm going to show you, says the Lord. 
begin to write down, put it on paper, says God. More Lord, more Lord, more Lord, more Lord. More Lord. We declare that for the next 40 days, 40 days of encounters. 40 days, 40 days of encounter. 40 days of supernatural happenings in the mighty name of Jesus. 40 days of that which needs to open will open in Jesus' name. Those things in the natural that need to open, those things that need to open, we declare that they shall open in the next 40 days. Things that they've been contending for, things that they've been believing for, we declare in the next 40 days, it shifts. In the next 40 days, 40 days of breakthrough, 40 days of encounter, 40 days in Jesus' name. Oh, if you want that, reach out and grab it. That's the power of the prophetic. That's the power of the prophetic word. We prophesy the next 40 days will be 40 days of miracles, 40 days of breakthrough, 40 days of revelation in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh. got a couple more things and we're going to wrap it up. This is totally by surprise, but but I, Tommy, Tom, I'm not sure who it is, but is there a couple here uh, that's originally from Florida and you have two children? Two. Do you guys have two kids? You have three kids. Two, I'm sorry. Two are back home. And, and it might be you, but I, I had this dream so clear before we came and I knew and well and I won't reiterate it but I knew it was specifically over a couple that was originally from Florida and Tommy told me before the service that you guys were from Florida but I said how many kids do they have and he said I don't know but is there anybody else from Florida before I move on no so that's that's you so I really felt specifically and I prophesied uh, to you guys just a minute ago but I felt specifically and this is what I saw in the dream I was speaking to a couple from Florida, but I never saw their faces. And I heard the Lord say, what you, uh, what you sowed in the season, I don't even know what that means, but what you sowed in the season to move away, God's going to restore it, but it's going to be give bigger than what you gave up. I don't know if that even means anything, but I heard that what you gave up is nothing compared to what he's going to bring back to you. And so whatever that means, um, and so I believe it's for now. I believe it's for now. I believe that you've seen a, a trickle of it, but it's going to be even bigger and greater. And actually, I even hear the Lord saying, you're, you're actually going to carry such a ministry of restoration that God's going to use you to restore things to people. And it's going to be accelerated. Like you may have had to wait for a little bit, but because you were faithful in the waiting, that God's going to put such an anointing for acceleration and restoration that you're going to see just restoration come to people so fast through your ministry. So I just bless you guys. <clears throat> bless you guys. One more thing, and then we're going to wrap it up. Uh, can we get some of the leaders? I want to, let's pray over these guys. Come on, the worship team, they pour out, they pour out, they pour out. And sometimes they don't get to receive all the time, but what's being poured out is for you too. So, Father, come on, let's, can we, some of you of the house, house leaders, come on. Let's just lay hands on them. Come on. I, I prophesy over Judah right now. You see, the Bible says that there was a story where Israel inquired of the Lord when they were about to go up against a battle. And they asked the Lord, Lord, what do we do? And he said, send Judah first. Judah means praise. Send Judah first. And that which you've been warring in, those things that you are contending for, I declare right now in Jesus' mighty name. I declare revival. I declare breakthrough. I declare anointing rest upon them in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you would upgrade them in the spirit. Father, as they pour out in song and in worship, 
oh God, that they would just get blasted by the Holy Ghost as they're driving down the streets, God, as they're in their kitchen. Oh God, may they get overwhelmed by your glory. May they get overwhelmed by your presence. Father, I declare that you would dispatch and release even new angels of worship, new angels with new sounds around them. Father, I declare breakthrough. I declare a breaker sound would come out of this house. Father, I declare in Jesus' name that even out of this house there would be melodies recorded that would carry revival sound. Revival sound. Father, as people hear the music, they're going to get blasted by the Holy Ghost. Father, we declare that there will be a how this will be a house of creatives and songwriters. Father, that this will be a house. Lord, even I don't even know if I prophesied this last time, but we prophesy supernatural schools, worship schools. God's about to take this house to a new apostolic level. I declare a worship school. I prophesy a supernatural school come out of this house where people will come and they will learn to tarry. They will learn to pray. They will learn to worship. They will learn to dig deep. They will learn to fall on their face before the Lord and cry out for a glory. Father, we prophesy right now that many will come and many will go and be sent out all over the nation because they came to this well of healing, this well of revival, this well of equipping. Father, we pray and we prophesy and declare over every worker right now, over every ministry leader right now, come on, Holy Spirit, more for them, more for them. The secrets of their heart, the things that they're contending for, we declare breakthrough. We declare breakthrough over their businesses, breakthrough over their workplaces, breakthrough over their profession, breakthrough over their families, breakthrough over their marriages, breakthrough over their kids, breakthrough over every prayer in Jesus' name. We bless them in the name of the Lord. As they pour out, may you refresh them mightily in Jesus' name. Amen.